welcome back to our second installment on our series on epigenetics. Today we dig a little deeper and uh, take our inspiration from the original work that uh, Michael Meany had done at McGill in Canada. This is now an extension of this work done by the group at uh, San Diego, the Salk Institute, uh, run by Fred Gage, who has done a great deal of innovative work in uh, neurobiology. Briefly, he believes that life experience shapes the neural genome. And here is an excerpt from a brief discussion he had uh, with a magazine uh, analyzing this paper that had appeared in Science. So they uh, transposed the uh, work done on the glucocorticoid receptor modulation by epigenetics to a phenomenon of transposon integration into cells in the rat hippocampus. And as it turns out, that the quality of mothering just as it did in the glucocorticoid receptor story, also appears to play an essential role in the liability of transposons to be activated in the rat genome in the hippocampus and be integrated into various locations in neurons in a mosaic-type pattern. So not all cells would be liable to have transposons be integrated, but there's a obvious a, a, a mosaic type random selection where this transposition occurs and perhaps impacting the uh, function of these cells in some kind of major negative or perhaps a positively creative way, uh, increasing the diversity of neuronal function in the hippocampus. So this was quite a mouthful of an introduction. Let's step back a little bit and look at the background. So we have known for a while now that different upbringings will affect your epigenome in different ways. So here you see um, the uh, attentive mom taking care of the uh, uh, rats here. And here on the other hand, you can observe a neglectful mom that she, maybe she's depressed not attending to their, her pups very well at all. And here's an allusion to the socioeconomic uh, background, not perhaps of these rats, but of humans. Here you see a neighborhood in a more higher class, high uh, socioeconomic stratum, and here's more of a slum-like, lower class, tenement-type neighborhood, and these differences also have been shown to play a role in the epigenome. Here then is the uh, Michael Meany story uh, in a brief summary again. You can see here the quality of the mothering is thought to leave epigenetic marks, in, particularly, in, in particular um, the uh, methylation of cytosine residue, uh, leading to differences in gene expression and then into differences in the inherited phenotype in the mouse circuitry. In this particular case, he was focused on the glucocorticoid feedback. As you can see here on the left-hand side, uh, poor grooming leads to a decrease in the glucocorticoid receptor expression, which then makes the system much less um, susceptible to feedback by cortisol, inviting runaway stress hormone escalation in the system. Here is an attentive mom who expresses appropriate levels of the glucocorticoid receptor, tuning the system to be very responsive to circulating levels of cortisol. Um, here is the uh, total outline. Here is the hippocampus, hypothalamus, uh, corticotrophin releasing factor of course plays a role which goes to the pituitary gland and eventually ACTH stimulates the adrenal gland and in a feedback fashion the glucocorticoids uh, can cycle back to the hippocampus, bind to the uh, glucocorticoid receptor and shut this uh, increase in production down at least in a temporary way. 
So that is the first piece of information we, can, we need to know to understand the uh, paper produced by the group uh, surrounding Fred Gage. Here is the other piece, and it goes back to Barbara McClintock, who started at the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory by studying maize because she was stuck by the, struck by the fact that uh, maize has these different shades and colorations uh, often within the same kernel and the question is how is this possible? And she proposed early on that she suspected jumping genes. Now she was ridiculed for this um, in part perhaps because she was one of the early women scientists in the field and her idea was so explosive and innovative that she met with a great deal of resistance. However, she was awarded the Nobel Prize eventually for this work. So we have the idea of jumping genes or mobile elements in the genome that given the right conditions can be activated, transcribed and reintegrated at random sites in the genome creating these kinds of mosaic expressions in this case of uh, pigments. Now, we all have a lot of transposons in our genome, and it appears that there is a progression in how many of these mobile elements we have in our genome according to our evolutionary status. So here are the invertebrates, uh, here are the chordates, here is our friend the, the dog or vertebrates, and here are we. So you can see that the uh, amount of uh, transposable elements in the genome has been increased through the development of the mammalian line. This gives you a breakdown of the total contribution. So perhaps only 2% or so of our DNA are true coding sequences encoding our proteins in our own cells and the rest are all kinds of non-coding sequences uh, in part transposable elements uh, which we will address now in this talk as being, as being important perhaps in the epigenetic modulation of neuronal activity in the hippocampus. So a brief review of the epigenetic phenomenon. You can see here that the chromosome is very tightly packed. Uh, chromatin is a um, bioengineering feat of packaging DNA uh, in association with histone proteins. Here is the histone. You can see that histone tails can be modified by acetylation or by addition of a methyl group. In addition, DNA itself can be modulated at cytosine residues, particularly in those areas which are GC-rich islands that lend themselves to methylation. And these two events uh, are the major modifying events, um, modifying the gene expression without uh, modifying the DNA sequence. So here is another way of showing this. You have here the uh, polymerase, RNA polymerase, which uh, can bind with certain transcription factors to a gene and then uh, lead to a transcript which can then be edited and either produced into a protein or reintegrated into uh, the DNA in case of a retroposon. So here then is the story that Fred Gage's group was dealing with. He believes that maternal care can alter genomic structure and the mechanism of this will be to activate uh, latent transposons, especially of the L1 type, uh, because the uh, methylation of certain uh, receptors um, and um, uh, promoter sites that promote the uh, uh, production of these transposons might be deficient in uh, rats exposed to poor mothering and this is exactly what uh, would then lead to um, the phenomenon of mosaic cells namely cells that have certain genes expressed 
neighboring cells, uh, different genes expressed, both resulting from the same progenitor cell. So the progenitor cell is then modified uh, by the uh, random transposition of these line one repetitive ancient elements into new DNA targets, perhaps enhancing or minimizing or even destroying the activity of certain genes. Here you have this typical line one element and it is um, read or transcribed from the three prime and backwards. So the group in San Diego developed essays where they could detect in the cells in the hippocampus transcripts of increasing lengths starting here at the three prime end and working their way backwards. Here is another slide that uh, shows this. The L1 elements mobilize through a copy and paste mechanism in which full length L1 messenger RNA is reverse transcribed at the beginning of the three prime end and inserted into new genome locations. So to uh, sometimes uh, reverse transcription stops early and immediate single-strand DNA molecules are degraded because insertion can be, um, can be completed. So uh, the assays that they uh, um, worked out then are able to detect progressive transcripts uh, starting from the free prime end and perhaps in successful cases going all the way back to the five prime end allowing for a complete insertion of a completed transcript of an L1 transposable element to be inserted into the genome. So here then is what it looks like in the brain. You have progenitor cells, neuronal progenitor cells, in which this particular transposition event takes place. So here you have the red cells where the transposition has occurred and then these will be incorporated into the circuitry resulting in a mosaic assembly of cells that either have this genetic modification or not being derived both from the same neuronal progenitor cell. Here is a more detailed presentation of this. You see the line one element here and you see the different methyl groups attached uh, suppressing the transcription of this line 1 element um, at the promoter sites. However, under certain circumstances, this can be relieved. The uh, suppression by methyl groups can be relieved and you get a transcription of the entire open reading frame and insertion into a new genomic site. So here then is the result of the experiment. You can see that maternal attention to the offspring follows a certain distribution. Not all mothers are terribly good and not more all mothers are terribly bad. It's kind of like a Gaussian distribution. And what the group did was divide the uh, mothers and their pups into two basic groups, namely the uh, high maternal care and the low maternal care groups. And you can see here broken down the different maternal behaviors that can be uh, looked at postnatal day 1 through 14. So this is the critical period that the researchers looked at. And you can see that here in the high maternal group you have a great deal of licking, grooming here uh, exceeding that of the low maternal care group. So these are the measures that uh, were used to divide the two moms and their pups. Cross-fostering experiments were uh, conducted as well, just like as Dr. Meadey did at McGill. So here is the result. This slide says it all. So here you have a measure of the transcripts. How many copies of um, this line one element were transcribed in uh, the cells in the pups according to um, low mothering and high mothering kinds of scores. 
So the best mothers had a score of 100, the worst mothers had a score of 85 or so. And you can say, you can see that poor mothering is associated with an increased availability, increased transcription of line one elements uh, in these cells. And you can see the different transcripts. This is from three prime end, five prime, and here they completed all the way to the five prime transcription. But all transcripts correlate negatively with the degree of mothering. You can see that uh, not all transcripts make it to the entire completion, but you can say the attempt of the transcription machinery, the unleashing of line one transcription um, is proceeding. In the next slide, you see another control experiment, namely uh, extracting single nuclei from these cells by cell sorting, fluorescent cell sorting, which allows you to separate cells which have been tagged with a label from other cells and using a very sensitive PCR, polymerase chain reaction assay, to look for L1 copy number. So this is an um, amazing feat of micro analysis by looking at single cell level PCR. And you can see here again that high maternal care is associated with lower transcripts compared to low, low maternal care. And this is uh, particularly true in those cells, those uh, uh, cell nuclei that have been isolated. The, the effect gets enhanced at the nuclear level because that is the site where uh, DNA, uh, RNA transcription and then DNA reintegration takes place. Finally, um, the group then looked at the uh, L1 promoter, that site which invites uh, transcription factors to come in and turn on the transcription machinery, and looked at the methylation state of this promoter site. Again, taking the inspiration from the uh, work by Dr. Mini, uh, who also had looked at methylation at the uh, glucocorticoid receptor promoter site. So here we're looking at the L1 promoter. And this promoter uh, contains a very good number of repeat monomers with easy, uh, with each representing a GC island, inviting literally uh, the methylation to come in. And you can see here that this is an active promoter that, which behaves in the appropriate fashion. Now, when um, rats were analyzed according to high mothering and no low mothering status, the pups in other words, and you look at the methylation intensity at this particular promoter site, it's called YY1 promoter site, you can see that methylation is uh, much more pronounced in the high maternal care group. There's more red color here than blue color if you compare the intensity of the bluish uh, areas and the red areas. So that would then um, confirm the prediction that the, mecha the, the mechanistic aspect of how poor mothering is translated into a change in line one uh, production and uh, reintegration is controlled here by methylation or the lack of methylation at the um, appropriate promoter that leads to L1 uh, transcription from the genome. And here you can see on the right hand side that um, maternal care again correlates with the percent of methylation of the receptor. Methylation leading to a re uh, reduction of the promoter uh, shutting down the transcription of the L1 element thereby leading to less um, RNA production, uh, reverse transcription and reintegration into the genome of the L1 transposon at various sites um, that are somewhat random, leading to mosaics in the brain, affecting the function of these mosaic cells in a somewhat unpredictable uh, and um, 
as yet unknown fashion. So the analysis then here needs to really go down to the individual cell level to demonstrate what is the impact on the wiring pattern of these brain areas as impacted by the deep reach of environmental events deep into the genome of brain cells, uh, rearranging in this case the genome itself, not just a biochemical effect such as um, a modulation of a receptor, but rather a pronounced effect on genome reshuffling, which is heritable throughout the progenitor cells that build up the neural circuitry. Now, lastly, um, just an advisory in the last slide here, it was recently reported that childhood stress and adversity also can result in hypomethylation of retroposons in humans. By retroposons in humans is meant, of course, the promoticides that allow for the production of retroposons. So that was it for a report on how genome can be reshuffled by deep environmental grip into the genome itself through epigenetic mechanisms and how this can lead to mosaic expression of different gene patterns in the genome of rats. We will continue this series soon with a report on how trauma has been found to influence the genome through epigenetic mechanisms. In the meantime, we thank you for your attention. We'll see you soon again for a talk at Behavioral Health 2000.